Good morning and welcome to worship. We are so glad that you are joining us online today. We are excited to announce that we are back open at 50% capacity here at the church. So as you feel ready to come back and join us, know that we are open and will stay open for as long as we possibly can. Hopefully uh, our numbers in our county will remain low for the COVID cases and we will be able to continue to be fully opened before too awfully long. Uh, if you want to come and join us for worship, it will be at 8 o'clock and 10.30 each Sunday morning. We also have a Wednesday evening option uh, at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we'll be having our midweek Lenten services, and so you all are invited to come and join us for those as well. We begin our service with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Holy Lord, we come as beggars before you on this holy ground, asking for your mercy. We have fallen short of bringing you glory through the things we have done and the things we have left undone. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us and show us mercy for our sins. Create in us clean hearts and renew a right spirit within us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, through the body and blood of Christ, the Lord does not cast us out of his presence. Instead, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Your sins are forgiven. May God continually draw you closer to God's holy presence. Amen. Let us join in singing our opening hymn, O Lord, throughout these 40 days.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Heavenly Father, the waters of the flood, you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation, you protected your son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 
first reading is from Genesis, the ninth chapter, starting at the eighth verse. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of my covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Our psalm today is Psalm 25, beginning at the first verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, and in you have I trusted all the long day. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions, Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. The second reading today is 1 Peter from the third chapter, beginning at the 18th verse. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Thanks be to God. Just at first. 
According to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent! and believe the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Some of you may be aware that we have a Lenten theme going on this year. It's called Holy Ground, Holy People, Made Whole by God's Love. The idea behind it came from a conversation I had with my best friend, who is a pastor in Nebraska. We were lamenting to one another that neither of us felt overly inspired this Lent with creativity. And I made a comment about how much people were longing to return to the holy ground of our worship space. Within moments, something clicked within each of us, and before I knew it, we had given birth to a midweek service plan, which focused on those holy places where God comes to us. So that will be what we focus on during our midweek services this Lent. And then, as I was looking over the assigned lessons for Sunday mornings in Lent, I was struck by the relationships that God has with God's people and wondering what is it that made these wonderful human people of God holy. But before we get too deep into today's lesson, I want to pause for just a moment and talk about the word holy. When something or someone is holy, it is by definition exalted or worthy of complete devotion as one perfect in goodness and righteousness. So we would understand God would be the only holy one as God is perfect in goodness and righteousness. It is God who is worthy of complete devotion because God's goodness is so good. When we sing something like, holy, 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 we are singing our praise and our devotion. However, another way to look at what it means to be holy is by this definition, dedicated or consecrated to God or a religious purpose, sacred which, for example, might mean the Holy Bible, or the Holy Land, or Holy Cross. It is something or someone who is set aside and somehow revered in some way. A sacred space, perhaps like we view the sanctuary here at the church, or a place where we've encountered the presence of God in some way. And yes, even people can be considered God's holy people as they have been set apart from others by God's presence and calling in their lives. As we move through Lent, we will discover how it is that God's holiness and God's holy presence makes us whole. H-W-H-O-L-E. At our Ash Wednesday service this week, we reflected on the creation and the corruption 
of the man and the woman that God had put in the garden. They had given into temptation and did the one thing that God asked them not to do. They ate of the fruit of the one tree that they were supposed to stay away from. And because of their action, sin broke into the world and destroyed the relationship that God had made with them. They were now tainted with sin and forced to be kept apart from God's holiness. By the time Noah came along, sin was everywhere. The earth was corrupt in God's sight, and violence was everywhere, according to the Bible. But for some reason, Noah remained a righteous man. Noah had what we might call a right relationship with God. And so God called Noah to do something very big. I am sure that you all know this story. Noah built an ark which was big enough to save two of every animal because God had confided in Noah that he was going to flood the world and start all over again. So Noah built the ark, got laughed at by his neighbors, and when the rain came, his three sons, his wife, his three daughters-in-law, got on board with all of the animals and remained safe from the rain and the storm and the flood that ensued for 40 days and 40 nights. I have to think that there was nothing holy about that boat trip. I can't imagine the smell of the animals and the worry and the sadness to think of what was happening to the world and all of the creatures within it. You know, oftentimes parents tell this story to their children, and when we do that, we gloss over the sadness and the destruction so that, that is so prominent and devastating in the text of this story. Friends, this is the story where God is so upset by the sin of the world that God brings about a flood to destroy it. When I really let it in, the story of Noah's Ark breaks my heart. But then we get to the end of the story. When the flood waters recede and the land becomes dry again, the boat comes to a stop from the constant rocking motion of the water and the doors open and all of the animals and all of the people get off and God tells them to go and be fruitful and multiply. And then God establishes a covenant with Noah and all of the creatures and really even with us. God's covenant is an unbreakable promise. And God says, never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. And never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And then God puts his bow in the sky as a sign of the covenant that God has made. A couple of months ago, we had that terrible windstorm here in Reno. And the fire broke out along the hills. Do you all remember that? I know it wasn't far from where some of you live. The fire would have been so much worse were it not for the rain that showed up later that night and into the early hours of the morning. As I drove to church the next morning, there was a sign of promise in the sky, a rainbow that went across the whole valley and seemed to land right on the hillside where there was the fire. The rainbow has been a powerful sign and reminder of the promise that God has made to us ever since it first appeared to Noah. But the rainbow is actually more than that. The Bible says that God says, I will set my bow in the clouds. The word that's used there isn't rainbow. It's used as an archer's bow. When God sets his bow in the clouds, God is really saying, I'm hanging up my bow. 
I'm hanging up my weapon of war, and I'm not going to do this again. I am choosing to deal with sin in a different way from this moment on. That is my promise to you, Noah, and to all who come after you. I know there are times when we hear of devastating floods, and we wonder about this. Many of us have experienced a flood or known someone who has. In recent years, there have been so many places that have flooded after hurricanes or tsunamis. Flooding rivers are something that farmers deal with more often than they would like, I'm sure. And perhaps some of you have lived through a flood. And when you are mucking out your house, seeing so many of your treasured possessions destroyed by mud and water and gunk and mold, it's awfully hard to remember the promise that God made in the sky. But the promise that God made was that God would no longer destroy, never again destroy everything, leaving only a few animals and eight people alive. God would never again bring a flood of that magnitude as punishment. Storms would come, but storms will go. Storms won't last forever. And the storm won't affect everyone in the same devastating way. When one region is affected, others always seem to rush to help. And in that, we find the rainbow and the promise. Even the storms that come to our lives, whether they be floods or earthquakes, fires, snow, and ice, they don't last forever. They may feel like they do, but they don't. Being lost and tempted in the wilderness, as many of us can get when we lose sight of the promises of God, won't last forever. Neither will illnesses and struggles that we deal with. And even COVID won't last forever. Our pain and our sorrow, our guilt and our shame, our fears and our worries, none of it will last. None of the things that threaten to overwhelm and flood us will last. What does last is the kingdom of God and the promise of love and grace and life that God offers to all of us through Jesus Christ, God's Son. But to be made whole with God's holy love, we must trust that these promises are for us. You must trust that God truly has hung up his bow and offers you life and hope and an abundance of love. Holy people are people of promise. Amen. Thank you.
faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we enter into our time of prayer, um, we will be singing, O Lord, Hear My Prayer, as we begin, and then we will continue singing it between each petition that I speak. So we invite you to sing along. Surround them with the community of concern and the warmth of your love. We pray especially for those in Texas. natural disasters. For those whose suffering is known only to you, comfort those who feel desolate. Give health and wholeness to all who suffer.
Praying also for ourselves, we ask that your spirit to accompany us through each wilderness that we must endure. Hear now the silent prayers and the desires of our hearts. With Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Even though we are gathering here at the Church for Holy Communion, we will continue to offer communion online at least through the Lenten season. We invite you to go ahead and get out the elements that you will be using to celebrate communion, whether they be uh, a wafer and grape juice or wine here from the Church, or a cracker and juice or wine from home. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you receive the bread, may you know that this is the body of Christ given for you. As you receive your wine or your grape juice, may you know that this is the blood of Christ that is shed for you.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Just a reminder, church is open, as I said earlier, so worship is at 8 o'clock and 10.30. We also have godly play going for the kids at 10.30 as well. We had planned to do worship in the garden uh, for communion services. We are no longer planning that. All worship will be here inside in the sanctuary from here going forward. Wednesday night worship for Lent is at 6.30 on Wednesday evenings. That service will also be live streamed on Facebook. So if you are not able to come or don't yet feel comfortable to join us, um, please know that it will stream on Facebook. Um, and then also just, we're just delighted to begin this Lenten journey back in this holy space. We hope that you all are doing well and we continue to keep you all in our prayers. Now receive the blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. May God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We invite you to join in singing our final hymn, The Desert Song.
Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you soon.